Hi, this is Eric, owner of the Rusty Rabbit. Today we're going to be talking about CIS systems, diagnosis of fuel-related problems. If your car is not running well and you suspect that it's in the fuel system, this is the place you want to be. This pertains to cars built 77 through 1980. I think 81 for the trucks, but I'm not positive. You'll have to check. You'll know if you look on the side of fuel distributor, if there's an electronic plug going into it, that's the CIS E system. If there's not, you're dealing with regular CIS. The systems operate under both basic principles, so diagnostics can be traded off here and there. It's worth watching both videos. Okay, we're going to take each component and we're going to deal with it as its own entity. Causes and effects and repair procedures. I think we're going to start with the cold start injector. Because it has given me problems, especially on a, a, a long distance trip I took in December a few years ago, when the cold start injector failed on the return trip. And I'll tell you what, without a spare, it was a hard ride home. The cold start injector, as I stated earlier, is controlled by the cold start switch. That's what sits on top of your intake manifold, located right at the inlet for your water. It should only operate for the first 15 to 25 seconds, depending, 20 to 25 seconds. It's a very short amount of time. Basically, the car's going to start. Immediately, that engine's going to start to warm up. The cold start injector is going to come on, as a, acting as a choke, and taper off to a stop at between 15 to 25 seconds. That's great. So what happens if the cold start injector fails to turn on? Well, if it's cold enough and your car has enough issues, it won't start. It'll sputter, it'll die. It won't start, it won't stay running, or it'll be extremely difficult to start. And the opposite, what happens if your cold start injector fails to turn off? Well, your car will flood. It'll run great when it starts, it's cold, and it'll run, and as it warms up, it'll be getting far too much fuel. The car will run rough, it'll run poorly, or it won't run at all. These are big issues if you're stuck 3,000 miles from home, as I was two Christmases ago. So, how are we going to deal with this? How do we fault trace the CIS cold start valve? Well, there's several things we're going to have to do. Part one, we're going to look at the electronic portion of it. The cold start uh, injector is controlled, like I've said before, by the thermal time switch. So if you're having a hard time starting your car when it's cold, the first thing you would want to check is that cold start time switch. In a minute, we're going to go outside, and I'll show you how to hook up a test light to see if your car is sending voltage to the cold start time switch and if it's leaving the voltage. Now here at the Rusty Rabbit, it's too warm today, so the cold start valve in my car is not going to operate. But I can show you what it will look like if it's not working. Let's go outside right now.